as a mom, it's, it's, it's a gift to be able to uh, advocate and help my children instead of just wish things were different. Nashville couple with severely autistic son uh, continuing to battle Metro schools tonight to allow him to use the device that he needs to communicate during testing. Fox 17 News' Caitlin Miller in studio now with the latest on this ongoing issue that we first told you about last month. This is the letter board that Landon Floor uses to communicate with his mother right by his side. So this is how it works. He points to each letter, A, N, D, to spell the word and. And then he continues doing this to form sentences. S, O, M. Landon Floor is a ninth grade student. He's autistic, nonverbal, and needs an individualized education plan. This will allow him to get proper accommodations in the classroom. Keep going, Landon. You got it. Oh. His mother, Angela, says Metro won't let him use his letter board during those evaluations. We believe the letter board was, was uh, a gift to his life, and they see it as us uh, basically taking him out of a good thing and putting him into something now that doesn't line up with science. Angela says the school district told her the American Speech Language Hearing Association does not recognize the benefit of this board. So he can use it during class, but not for his IEP evaluation, marking the speech language evaluation report incomplete, keeping him from getting accommodations. President and CEO of the Professional Educators of Tennessee says the district has to work with the family. We put up roadblocks, and this is exactly why uh, we are losing support in public education. Bowman adds the U.S. Department of Education says students with disabilities have the right to effective communication, and this includes letter boards. We reached out to MNPS last month and again today. The district told us they cannot go into specifics about a student due to privacy protections. But Angela wants justice for her son. What do you want from the school district? I want the school system to join with us and helping these kids go to college. You know, that's what we want. Get an education, you know, have a fulfilled life, be able to tell everybody how they feel and what they think. 13-year-old Landon Fallor is severely autistic and has a speech sound disorder. His mother says that he's been in honors classes his whole life, but after moving to Nashville, Metro schools forced Landon to repeat the ninth grade. Landon's mother says the problem is how Metro schools are testing. Let's see if you agree. I hated school until I found communication. Landon Fallor had a major breakthrough five years ago when he started using this letter board because it enables him to communicate. T-H-I-N. Landon points to one letter at a time to form words and sentences. His mother, Angela Fallor, says interaction was very limited before this. Now he's able to tell me that he wants to study nanobiology and... Um, Th that he wants to take Keep calculus and, bone. you know, things like that where, you know, the poor kid was stuck in, you know, circles and squares and double-digit addition for years and years and years. The Fallors moved to Goodlettsville in June, and Angela says they made the tough decision to put Landon in the ninth grade again because Metro Nashville Public Schools wouldn't accept some of his credits from Florida. Tennessee required Landon to take a universal screener that assesses all students. The Metro schools wouldn't allow Landon to take it with his letter board. It's not fair. It's like taking someone's voice box away. Um, it just seemed cruel, you know. As a parent, I, I felt like it was five steps back. Angela says the letter board is crucial for Landon because he can't write or use a mouse and he's just learning how to type. But the Metro School screening exam provided only a mouse and keyboard. Angela says Landon couldn't even answer basic problems, not because he didn't know the answers, but because he had no way to communicate the answers. What do you think about that? H-U-M-I-L-I-A-T- I was humiliated. The Metro School's evaluation determined Landon could continue taking ninth grade honors classes, but enrolled him in intervention courses, classes assigned to students who lack basic math and reading skills. His mom says Landon should be in 10th grade honors courses, and she asked that he be removed from the intervention courses. I asked to be dismissed from the tiered intervention. We were told that we weren't allowed to, to ask that question and that if he didn't, do the tiered intervention that he would be considered truant and that it would affect his GPA because they would fail him in those courses. I would definitely question the 
use of the assessment in the in the first place. The former state assistant commissioner for special populations, Teresa Nichols, tells Fox 17 News Landon's screening test isn't even designed to determine which courses he should be taking. If you're using an assessment to identify a student's needs, then no, you shouldn't be using that same assessment to place a student into a class. After a hearing before the Tennessee Department of Education, Metro Schools allowed Landon to take the screener with his letter board and removed him from intervention courses. We requested an interview with Metro Schools to see what they're going to do to prevent this from happening to other students. MNPS declined my interview request, claiming they can't go into specifics about a student due to state and federal student privacy protections. State leaders tell us that the budget goes into effect in July, and both the both sides of the aisle say children and the employees just simply can't wait. Look at this video Tennessee Holler shared with us. Kids sleeping on a floor at DCS. The department is blaming funding, so Governor Bill Lee agreed to increase its budget to $158 million. But Senator Heidi Campbell says more can be done ahead of time. She wants state money to be used in ads, letting people know that the state needs foster families. We're not reaching these families. I think we need to put a lot of um, energy into making sure that the word gets out and that we're, you know, telling people about um, about these opportunities. Conservative radio host Steve Gill has an idea of his own. You know, if there was ever a time when they should use allocated funds for sort of an emergency use, uh, certainly the kids that are being held in state offices, they're being placed in hospitals, they deserve kind of priority spending. And right now, the state is sitting on a more than one billion dollar surplus. Last week, Governor Lee addressed the DCS issues. We're working on it right now. We're working on the, how to fix this problem. I reached out to the governor's office today to see if his administration has come up with a short-term solution. His office says this is a nationwide issue and the department addressed this through consistent pay raises and will make this a priority in the upcoming budget.